Is there any attempt going on or any consideration yet about using social media with the university to help tie students more into the local community? I mean, because that uh, seems to be a constant <coughs> battle going on as OSU is OSU and then there's the rest of Columbus. And We're probably not a lot. Wendy and Ted go, because Ted might be, some of the general university questions, I'm really not the best person uh, to answer any of those kinds of questions. Actually, I think that's a really, really good question, Andrew, because um, that's something <coughs> we're really trying to beef up on our end. Um, I'm concentrating primarily on research communications within the medical center, and we were just awarded a huge grant from the NIH to uh, develop some kind of infrastructure to help researchers um, take their discoveries and translate them quicker into patient care. So um, part of that, that charge by the government, and something we're still very passionate about too, is um, community engagement. So um, stuff like social media and stuff is, is very is a very high interest to our organization. Um, I'm not sure we're doing a really good job either um, like Sean said, figuring out why we're doing this, what, what's, what's the strategy behind it. You know, we have a Facebook, we have Twitter, but it's just a big push of information. We're just pushing out our press releases basically to everybody um, as an organization. And I think that's good, and I'm glad there's some interest in doing that, but um, I think there needs to be more thought and more strategy behind how we engage the community more into these kind of things. Um, the big, the big uh, foundation or platform that we're basing our um, need to reach out to community is in regards to clinical trials. Um, clinical trials are the necessary tools and, and, and pathways that we need to, to create new, new medicines, new treatments to cure people. So um, I know there's a lot of barriers involved in coming to clinical trials. So. Um, but at the same time, it's so important for us to be able to get people involved. And, and so we're trying to look for new ways to uh, reach out to people through social media and let them know about things that are going on so that they feel like they're making a more informed decision uh, when they're getting involved in clinical trials. Um, but that's just as an organization as a whole. Um, more specifically is another area that I'm involved in, and that's um, we've recently rebranded as well in the past two years, and we've um, adopted a new logo that has a DNA strand on it. And that DNA strand is um, part of our overall mission when we rebranded to uh, be more focused on a new concept called personalized healthcare. And so um, this new new concept of healthcare is going to be radically changed in the next few years. It's going to be basically um, your treatment tailored based on your own genetic makeup um, and all other things like your environment, your culture, your ethnicity, and your genetic makeup. So um, we have a center established for that, Center for Personalized Healthcare, and we know it's early and it's new, but we are holding a national conference and invited experts from all over the world, really, to come and talk about these things and how we can advance it. So. We would love. We were trying to find a good way to use social media um, to uh, get the word out about this conference because it is a global uh, initiative. Uh, it's just not us. So, for us, being able to communicate with the world and the local community is why we were looking at um, social media as a way to uh, reach those people. So, there are a couple things that we were doing in that regard and one of them is we developed a digital press room and those are things that are kind of common um, where you see the press release and you have a list of speakers and contacts and all that information. The other thing we added was a section where, um, and this was designed specifically for bloggers, that even if you weren't able to attend the conference and this is something you were interested in, in knowing more about, we posted a section where you could type in a question and directed to a particular speaker, and then during the conference, we would, during the Q and A, ask that question and post it to the website afterwards. 
So we, even though the conference is over two days, we want to continue that dialogue um, and, and allow other people to entertain the public to come. Um, the other thing we are doing is trying to uh, cross-promote the conference with other bloggers. So what we did was we searched the, the web and we uh, came across Jody and um, some national bloggers as well and have, have contacted them personally, really reached out to them um, individually and told them what we were doing and invited them to share their thoughts. So um, there's some good stuff going on with this right now. We're also doing some internal stuff. Our CEO, whose name is Dr. Stephen Gabby, does a vlog um, as needed and we post it on our in internal site, our intranet. And so um, we allow people to respond back to that as well. And, they could type in comments and stuff. But um, as far as the general um, external stuff, um, we're still working those kinks out and, and um, looking for suggestions or guidance on, on how that information probably should be delivered instead of just um, RSS feeds of our press releases. Do you know how many people are participating and subscribe to your feeds, if any? Well, we have our Facebook just launched. I think we have three, maybe a few more. Um, the Twitter, I'm not. I think we have um, like maybe a hundred or so. Are you are you tracking the people that are subscribed to you, like your news feeds? Uh, things like that? No, I don't. We what we're doing, we're in we're in the process right now of converting our web applications and our email applications over to a SharePoint format and so um, once that happens or we will have the, the option to send the information out as an RSS feed and I think we'll know better than um, who's picking those up or not. As far as I know right now I don't even from the Twitter there's not a lot of information we're, we're offering as an RSS feed. What, uh, one of the challenges that I'm addressing at, at Fisher is the the uh, review of the analytics of, and basically the performance of all these systems and, and basically to help answer the question, how do we know we're successful? Mm -hmm. uh, because yeah, we don't. <laughs> so we didn't even know in our analytics systems when I got there. Yeah. Now we do, but yeah. you know, it's because you know, you're flying in the dark otherwise mm -hmm. and you can't afford to do that. Mm -hmm. I, did, I did think your flicker was a very good idea and I might have to steal that from the College of Medicine. And <laughs> Hey, that's cool. I can tell you what we learned along the way. <laughs> How did you decide to do a Facebook page and to do Twitter? Um, mostly because everyone else is doing it and they were like, this is something we need to do. So um, I do know um, the Facebook application was particular interest in the College of Medicine because of the student base. You know, it's really popular. Um, I think the Medical Center Facebook page is just kind of a, a spin -off, off that saying, this is how we partner together. We support each other on all levels, and so we try to connect that way. You know what would make me want to subscribe to, say, the Medical Center's Twitter? Yeah. Would be if they're releasing, say, this time of year, um, some sort of figures on the number of flu cases that are showing up, and maybe some good tidbits about, you know, here's what's going around Columbus. And and you know maybe if you like when consider report, but for <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, seriously I mean that would be useful information to me and and generally speaking when I sign up for something or I join into a community or you know I pay attention to something it's because I'm receiving useful information now you know I mean if you guys find some great new way to you know replace someone's hip that's really interesting. But to be honest with you, until the time comes that I need a hip replacement, I pretty much could care less, you know. Um, so, I, I mean, that's just... No, that's a really good suggestion. And to be honest with you, um, to some degree, we try to do that. It's always been, in the past, we've always been at the mercy of the media. I mean, we have all of these experts within the medical center that I can talk about just about any time topic you want. We've always had to wait till the media contacted us and say, hey, this is going on. Can you comment on it? So maybe we just need to look at it a different way and say, well, we have this great thing going on with pandemic flu. You know, maybe we need to just kind of Twitter about it or something and have an expert Twitter about it. 